Hi there, just thought I'd try a screencast for this blog posting. This is part of an e-learning module called Understanding Echo. So let's start with the basics and run through some of the standard imaging views, what they show and what they can tell us. If you've never seen an echo before, the parasternal views are probably the hardest to get your head around. The probe is placed around the V2, V3 position and the beam slices through the heart long ways. In this view, we can visualize the left ventricle, the left atrium, the right ventricle, and the septum. We see only two valves in this view, the mitral valve and the aortic valve. Here we can also see the aortic root. We mainly use the parasternal view to measure the size of the left ventricle, left atrium, and aortic root measure the thickness of the left ventricular walls, checking for abnormalities such as hypertrophy. Although we can't see all the segments of the left ventricle at this point, we will also form an impression of how well the left ventricle is contracting. We then take our first look at the aortic and mitral valves. With the short axis view, the transducer stays in the same place, but now we simply rotate it and angle it so we can view the aortic valve head on. You should be able to see all three cusps of the aortic valve. It looks a bit like a Mercedes sign. Here then is the left atrium, the atrial septum, the right atrium, the tricuspid valve and the right ventricle. Angling up a bit further we would then also be able to view the pulmonary valve and then the pulmonary artery a little more clearly than we can see here but this will give you a rough idea of where you'll see those structures. We mainly use this view to assess the structure of the aortic valve so checking that it has three cusps. This is also a good view for visualizing certain types of ventricular septal defects. Sometimes this view gives us a really good look at the atrial septum so we can check for things like aneurysms or atrial septal defects. To assess the tricuspid and pulmonary valves, here we can also assess the main pulmonary artery. We can check for abnormalities such as a patent ductus arteriosus, but more about some of these defects in another screencast when we start looking at colour flow Doppler. The transducer stays where it is, but now we angle the beam downwards to view the left ventricle. We angle the transducer progressively through mitral valve level, mid ventricular level, and then at apical level. If you have your angle correct, the left ventricle ideally will appear circular in shape. So here is the main left ventricular cavity, and here we can see the right ventricle. Now this is the best view for assessing the various regions of the left ventricle and of course assessing LV systolic function. It is also very useful for checking regional wall motion abnormalities. For example, after a heart attack a patient may have regions of hypokinesia or akinesia. We have many segments of the left ventricle that we check during a scan, but as a rough guide this is the septal region, the anterior region, and here we have the lateral and inferior regions. Even if your knowledge only runs to the heart has four chambers, this view is very easy to understand. The transducer sits roughly around the V4, V5 chest position. In a normal subject, the left ventricle will be the larger chamber, so it shouldn't be too hard to identify. Yep, here it is. This then is the left atrium. Here we have the septum then of course the right atrium and right ventricle. The two valves we see in this view are the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve. We mainly use this view to assess right heart size and function, uh, assess the tricuspid valve and the mitral valve, assess left heart size and function. It is from this view that we perform something called a Simpson's measurement to ascertain the ejection fraction. We also use this view to measure diastolic function and LA volumes. If we angle the beam upwards, we can also visualize and assess the aortic valve. This is often referred to as a five chamber view. And if we rotate the transducer anticlockwise, we effectively get what's known as a two chamber view of the heart. And this is a great view for assessing the inferior region of the left ventricle. With the subcostal view, the patient lays on their back and the transducer is placed below the sternum and angled upwards toward the heart. 
This kind of looks like a four chamber view on its side. So ideally the septum should now be perpendicular to the transducer, which is great for picking up septal defects using color flow Doppler. So here we have the left ventricle, left atrium, septum, right ventricle, and right atrium. So aside from septal defects, this is also a good view for visualizing pericardial and pleural effusions. Then by rotating the transducer anticlockwise, we can also bring in structures such as the IVC and the abdominal aorta. I have to say that if you work in emergency care or if you happen to have someone with a misshapen rib cage, a subcostal view may be the only view you can obtain. So we often use it as a modified alternative to the standard parasternal and apical views for assessing structure and function. Lastly, we have the suprasternal view or arch view. The transducer is placed in the suprasternal notch and this gives us a view of the aortic arch. So here we have the ascending aorta and the descending aorta. We use this to assess the blood flow and to check for abnormalities such as a coarctation. I've also picked up quite a few PDAs from this view. Thanks for listening and I hope you've enjoyed this short presentation.